Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for your attending. In this session, we will talk about the scale out rabbit MQ cluster can improve performance while keeping high availability. This is our session's agenda. The presentation uh, has uh, three parts. First part shows background story why we try to scale out rabbit MQ cluster and our actions for goal. Second, second part shows operate works for deploying high performance HA rabbit MQ clusters. Finally, we show developer size efforts that knock down heavy workload in rabbit MQ messaging bus caused by specific project. First of all, we introduce ourselves. I'm Mahito Ogura. I'm working at NTT Communications as a DevOps engineer. He is Masahito Moroi. He is working at NTT Software Innovation Center as a cloud architect. And he is Blazer PTL and Congress Core Reviewer. Background, so we got a report that message queue became a bottleneck at 10,000 VMs and it's difficult to create VM after that about three years ago. So deploying, deploying OpenStack in large scale environment we can regard message queue as a bottleneck. This issue becomes a topic of past OpenStack Summit and Ops Meetup. To solve this, OpenStack operators typically tune message queue or separate the message queue into merge clusters. However, operators suffer from managing and tuning multiple message queue cluster and investigating which OpenStack project have heavy workload for the clusters. Entity Communications has provided OpenStack-based enterprise cloud service. Entity Communications is planning to expand its cloud environment to more than 1,000 nodes as a more than 10,000 VMs per region. So we need to improve performance and operation on message queues. Our goal is to run more than 1,000 compute nodes per region, since we can regard the message queue as a bottleneck. The better way to improve performance on message queue becomes one of the essential considerations. Our first action is that we measured RabbitMQ performance and verified RabbitMQ functions. Next, we analyze message in, inside OpenStack at high road. Finally, we verify the RabbitMQ improvement method on OpenStack. Next, as an operator, I'll talk about RabbitMQ and the result of RabbitMQ verification. RabbitMQ is a widely deployed open source message broker. Message broker is used by producer and consumer. A producer is a program that sends messages. A consumer is a program that mostly waits to receive messages. RabbitMQ support multiple messaging protocol MQP is one of them. RabbitMQ cluster replicate all data and state required for the operation of RabbitMQ broker across all nodes. An uh, exception to this is message queues, which by default reside on one node, though they are visible and reachable from all nodes. And message queues can be mirrored in other nodes. We can use high availability mode by using mirrored queue across node in a cluster. By default, queues within a RabbitMQ cluster are located on a single node. When there are many nodes in a RabbitMQ cluster, queues will be distributed to each node. In this way, RabbitMQ cluster can improve performance because the load of each node becomes fewer than a single RabbitMQ node. RabbitMQ can keep availability by mirrored queue, which is replicated across multiple nodes. 
Each mirror queue uh, consists of one master and one or more mirrors, with the oldest mirror being promoted to the new master if the oldest, old master disappears for many reasons. Messages published to the queue are replicated to all mirrors. Consumers are connected to the master regardless of which node they connect to with mirrors dropping messages that have been acknowledged at the master. Queue mirroring therefore enhances availability. RabbitMQ has three modes for queue mirroring. All mirrors queued on all nodes in the cluster. Exactly mirrors the specific specified number of queues in the cluster. Node mirrors queues to the specified names of node in the cluster. Can HA mode exactly scale out? The answer is yes. It can improve performance. The figure below visualizes the performance when scaling out the cluster. At the three nodes, the uh, throughput was about 31,000 messages per sec. At four nodes, it was about 41,000 messages per sec. At five nodes, it was about 73,000 messages per sec. When using HM mode exactly, we can see that throughput improved as we increase the nodes. Can HM mode or scale out? Yes, HA mode or can scale out too. The figure below visualizes the performance when scaling out cluster. Similarly, at three nodes, 18,000 messages per sec. At four nodes, 27,000 messages per sec. At five nodes, uh, 29,000 messages per sec. When using HA or we can see that throughput also improved as we increase the nodes. However, the throughput improvement was smaller than HA exactly when there are five nodes in a cluster. HA mode exactly with two replicated queues was about 72,000 messages per sec, but HA mode all was only about 28,000 messages per sec. I guess that this difference comes from the queue mirroring overhead cost. When there are five nodes in a cluster, exactly with the two replicated queues creates one master and one mirror queue. While all creates one master and four mirror queues. Here are some conclusion uh, of our gravity dynamic verification. We measured whether the performance of RabbitMQ cluster can be improved by scale up. We learned that the RabbitMQ cluster can improve performance by scaling out, and the performance is different depending on the HA mode setting. We also verified the behavior of RabbitMQ cluster when scale out, scale down, and fail out, when adding a node to cluster to scale out. A new queue is pressed in the new node or old node randomly. However, RabbitMQ cluster doesn't rebalance existing queues onto the new node when they are sufficient mirror queues. If you want to rebalance existing queues onto a new node, you have to rebalance manually or rebuild the cluster. Note that when rebalancing a queue, containing a large number of messages or large size messages. The workload may become high in RabbitMQ cluster. When adding a node cluster, RabbitMQ client need to update config and to restart because client cannot connect to the new node without config update. If you use load balancer, you have to update config to access the new node. When removing a node from the cluster which is set exactly, if the remind nodes are less than the specified count, queues will be mirrored to all nodes. 
Otherwise, if there are more nodes than the specified count, then a new mirror queue will be created properly on another node instead of the removed node one. In both cases, connection error increases for while at the client side. If you need to send or receive a message correctly, you should consider error handling by the client. When a node goes down, the behavior of RabbitMQ cluster is similar to removing a node from cluster. If there are nodes less than the count in the cluster, queues are mirrored to all nodes. Otherwise, if there are plenty of nodes more than the count, new mirror queue will be created properly on another node. When recovering the cluster by adding a node, the behavior of RabbitMQ cluster is similar to adding a node to cluster, as I talked before. If there are nodes less than the count in the cluster, queues will be mirrored to a dead node. However, if plenty of nodes more than the count in the cluster, then no mirror queue will be created when adding at the node. If you want to reverse existing queues onto a recovered node, you have to reverse manually or reveal the cluster. Next, I'll speak about OpenStack messaging inspection. Messaging inside OpenStack uses message queue to connect among components or a service in the components. For example, as shown in the figure, many Nova services are linked by queue here in the center. And between Nova and Cinder, they are also linked in message queue. There are two patterns of when messaging is used, API call and periodic task. API call means a user request, a call from periodic task, and so on. This call the API, and the result messaging occurs to connect among components or among service in components. Periodic task means a task that, in, uh, sorry, that is periodically performed in the service, such as checking and updating the status of in instance, hearing instance information cache, and so on. OpenStack have three messaging kinds. The first one is cast. Cast sends a message to message queues, and that message reaches only one target. Even if there are multiple targets that can reach, receive the message, the message will be uh, oh, sorry. The message will reach only one target, and no reply will be sent from message received to message sender. The second one is call. Call is similar to the cast. The message is sent to message queue and reach only one target. Of course, if there are multiple targets that can receive the message, the message will reach only one target. Unlike cast, message received will send the reply to message sender. The last one is fanout. Fanout send a message to message queue and the message reached multiple targets, and no reply will be sent. The name of the queues used in OpenStack messaging have some rules, which are following four. Service name is queue name according to service which message are sent for, such as conductor, scheduler, and so on. Service name fanout UID is created for sending message to whole service, for example, compute, etc. Service name point host name is created for sending message to specified service host. Reply UID is created for sending reply messages corresponding to call message. As I said, there are two patterns which are API call and periodic task. I will talk about messaging by API call first. API call messaging occurs by user request or call from periodic task. 
This figure shows the flow of creating an instance by user request. First, user send an instance creation request to Nova API. Nova API that received the request then cast a message to Nova Conductor via Conductor queue. Second, Nova Conductor send a call message to Nova Scheduler via Scheduler queue. Third, Nova Scheduler return to reply Nova Conductor. Fourth, Nova Conductor send a call message to compute, Nova Compute via the queue of Computer Point Host, which is specified in Nova Scheduler. Hence, Nova Compute replies the result of instance creation to Nova Conductor. Let me talk about the second messaging pattern, periodic task. OpenStack services have tasks that are exec executed periodically. Some of them send message to other services by remote procedure call or API. In other words, OpenStack executes periodically messaging internally. The number of periodic tasks in major components is as follows. Nova, Neutron, and Cinder have periodic tasks which send message to other services, while Grass and Keystone don't have periodic tasks. Periodic tasks regularly execute API call, DB access, or a messaging to other services. This figure shows the flow of instance information synchronization to Nova Scheduler as a periodic task of Nova Compute. First, the periodic task of Nova Compute send a call message to Nova Conductor via Conductor queue. Nova Conductor access database to synchronize instance information. Second, Nova Conductor reply the result of database access to Nova Compute via reply queue. Third, Nova Compute cast a message to Nova Scheduler via Scheduler queue update instance information. In this flow, DB access is executed only once, but how many times DB access will be executed by other periodic tasks like update available resources? It depends on the number of instances. So the amount of API call and messaging depends on the number of resources. For example, instance, block device, and so on. Let me sum up the result of OpenStack messaging inspection. OpenStack had two messaging patterns, API call and periodic task. These two use common set of queues. For example, uh, service name, service name, point host name, reply, and final. The number of queues does not increase unless nodes, service, or components and are uh, uh, added. In other words, when a node, service, or component is added, a new queue will be created. The amount of message depends on the number of API call from users, the number of resources such as instance, block device, and virtual routers, and the number of service nodes as this value increases the amount of messages will increase. The message size also depends on the number of resources, such as instance, block device, and routers, too. For example, when instance information is synchronized to Nova Scheduler, message size will be large if the number of instances is large. Next, I'll talk about some result of instance ins uh, increment role testing. Uh, we verify the workload of messaging inside OpenStack on our test environment. We increase the instance from one to a thousand to measure the number of messages and the message size of each queue. Some information of our test environment is as follows. Although the environment is not big, it was enough for the role testing. This figure below shows the accumulation of the number of messages and the message size from 
zero, one to a thousand instances each running for one hour. You can see that the number of messages and message size both increase when instance increases. Especially, we found that the number of message and message size of the conductor queue increase much when increasing resources because every resource data stored in database by Nova Compute will be checked and updated by Nova Conductor. In other words, if we expand an OpenStack cluster and continue to add new resources, we can regard that the highest workload in message queue is conductor queue. Obviously, this could be a problem. Okay, thanks, Mahito. I'm Masahito Muroi, who has similar the name with Mahito, <laughs> but uh, I'm Masahito. Hey. In my part, I'll show how MQ, the Rabbit MQ issue could be solved by the developer's side. First, I will show you the details of the problem in uh, Rabbit MQ and the design of how we solve that problem. The second, I will dive into the, the details of implementation to the, uh, for that solutions. The main reason of this performance issue is all of the Nova Compute nodes use one conductor node to send a message to Nova Compute, uh, sorry, Nova conductor process. All periodic messages go through the queue and it makes message, message stacks in that conductor queue. Then it requires RabbitMQ has a high, perform, high throughput to handle tons of messages in that queue. Of course, the architecture, uh, the current architecture is, uh, sorry, has a lot of advantage, though it could have the performance issue. For example, the good point of this architecture is it makes Nova process more easily to scale out. The Nova, comp uh, sorry, all process attaches the Nova conductor queue and all messages can be load balanced to the all every Nova conductor. In addition to the perform, uh, sorry, scale out advantage, it also had HCA feature to Nova conductor process. When one Nova, Nova conductor goes down, the other Nova conductor process can pick up the messages from co the conductor queue. So the basic idea to solve that pro performance problem is to divide one conductor queue to multiple conductor queue that Nova Compute used for sending messages. It looks like making mesh architecture for messaging network. In this picture, the two Nova Compute no process use red conductor queues. One Nova Compute process use blue conductor queues. And last Nova Compute process use green conductor queue to Nova conductor. Nova Compute process to Nova conductor process. It, reduce, well, it can reduce workload in conductor queue rather than only using one conductor queue. So as I mentioned, using mesh architecture can reduce its workload. But we need to think how we realize this architecture in current RPC and messaging implementation. In next, I will explain some tricks to achieve that mesh architecture with current Nova implementation. 
So to divide queues used by Nova Compute, uh, sorry, no, a Nova Compute process, each compute process locally pick up a leader Nova conductor process. So one Nova, one Nova compute process send its messages via only to the leader process in the Nova conductor process. So how the steps to choose the local reader are following. First, a Nova compute process called conductor, conductor queues as usual as a fin in initial RPC call, and then no, the, no, uh, sorry, the one Nova conductor process receive its RPC. Then, the Nova compute process gets a response from Nova conductor process. And remember the Nova conductor process as a local reader of the Nova compute process. After the first RPC, Nova compute process sends all messages to the compute host queue to the Nova conductor process instead of just a conductor process queue. And in case of down at the local reader, in that case, the top of Nova conductor process goes down. The Nova compute process start from step from start again from step one to choose a new local reader. As a result of these steps, Nova Compute sends their messages to different compute host, different conductor host queues. In this picture, two compute nodes send messages through conductor host one queue, and one, comp one compute process sends its messages through compute host two queues. And finally, the last compute process sends the messages through conductor host three queues. So the local selection has some advantages over other approaches. First, appro first advantage is no central manager. In general, to pick a leader from multiple process, a central manager which decides the leader is required. However, the, the local leader selection approach doesn't require any central manager because each Nova compute decides its leader in itself. The second advantage of this architecture is load balancing among every Nova conductor process is automatically done by RabbitMQ features. Consumers who get the messages from one queue are changed by RabbitMQ. So the initial RPC is load balance. Uh, sorry, initial RPCs are taken by or each conductor node, and every Nova compute node send their messages to the different Nova conductors. Finally, third advantage is the local reader selection rebalanced workload in case of Nova conductors process goes down. When Nova conductors go down, the Nova compute process start again from the initial RPC, RPC to pick a new reader conductor process. As I mentioned in the second advantage, all initial RPC triggered by that down are load balanced to every Nova conductor process. So finally, I want to 
quickly concludes our sessions our, and our implementation, investigation, and something. Our experiment results show that RabbitMQ can, can scale out with keeping its high availability. Scale out enables RabbitMQ cluster to create additional message queue in that cluster. However, if one queue hit its performance limit, cluster nodes having that queue need to be scaled up. And next, the number of messages and the message size are proportional to the number of instances and the services of OpenStack processes, like Nova Compute, Nova Conductors. And second conclusion is that the performance issue in conductor queue can be solved by changing the messaging style. You can find our sample implementation for that approach in that uh, repository. And current status for upstreaming this implementation to the Nova community is not yet done, but we are planning to upstreaming this style of messaging to solve that problem we already find out. And one of our future work is because there's no much information on HA mode exactly setting, we think it is necessary to confirm that there are no problems due to large scale and long term stabilization test in the future. So thanks for coming this session. This presentation is powered by NTT and NTT Communications. Next question, QA time. So any questions and comment? If you have, please use this mic to record all the questions and answer in that video. I'm an Oslo messaging core. Mm -hmm. I develop Oslo messaging. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, why not just get rid of Rabbit? Get rid of Broker. And use one of the other messaging technologies that we're developing. Is there is a messaging technology that is more distributed in nature, and more point to point, which will get rid of all the overhead associated with doing RPC over queues. RPC over queues is a hack. Mm -hmm. It's because when you only have a broker, or you only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. There are better ways of doing RPC, and there are other technologies and also messaging that will do this for you. It but they're new. They're newer technologies, and we're trying to build awareness. It, it sounds like using uh, other MQ system instead of Rabbit MQ? Or? For RPCs, yes. There's things like Zero MQ, uh -huh. and there's even the one that uh, is uh, more um, distributed mm -hmm. called the m message router. It enables uh, the performance or the distributed we, MQ. Got, yeah, uh, it does two things. It, it is faster in, in at least the benchmarks that we mm -hmm. run because it doesn't do any queuing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it also allows, if you have like locality, if you have mm -hmm conductors s distributed through this mesh of you, if you will, messaging mesh, mm -hmm. then any clients that want to dock to those conductors will talk to the one that's local. Mm -hmm. And that way you can load balance across multiple sites. A anyways, it's, it's just something to consider. Um, these are developer ready, so mm -hmm. I'm not saying go to production, but I'm saying if you're testing this stuff and you want to quantify it, I would suggest looking a little bit into this stuff because it's kind of the future direction, I think, for, for these technologies. So that wasn't a question, that was just a comment. Uh, yeah, 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 I know. I think it's, it's 
the, the answer of this question is should be from the operator side yeah. is good. Well, like uh, why we choose Rabbit MQ uh, yeah. and uh, uh, so in this uh, our why Rabbit MQ choose so and uh, so we verify uh, so zero MQ and so Kafka and answers Rabbit um, message queue. So uh, zero MQ lost so the message and so we can't catch so lost messaging and so. Kafka uh, same so uh, lost uh, message so because so RabbitMQ so uh, have so this um, disaster and so RabbitMQ is so um, we have so achievement and so we production used RabbitMQ and so we so it's difficult to change so other message queue. Uh, so in production, and so we chose so RabbitMQ. Okay. No, this is just just in kind of an experimental mode. Uh, Kafka can't be used for RPC. Um, but these other ones can be. You can still use Rabbit for notifications because you need storm for it. Mm -hmm. But you know, just something, something to maybe look at. So this is a follow-up question to your comment. Um, I also looked at RabbitMQ performance problems on our infrastructure recently and thought, okay, well, there might be an alternative and I heard about zero MQ being supported in OpenStack, but I saw that it's being deprecated. Uh, so what's, what's the long-term goal from also messaging and you know, maybe the technical committee in general about what should be the message bus for, or the message buses, if they are several supported for OpenStack? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, uh, actually, zero MQ, we're working on trying to get more maintainers. The maintainers that we're working on that driver have, unfortunately, no longer part of OpenStack. So we're recruiting if anybody's interested to use zero MQ. But the other technology that's very similar and I think in some ways will be more of a solution for distributed um, cloud would be the message routing. Uh, and that, that's being maintained. I'm, I'm here, I'm doing that. I've got other people who are working to get into triple O. It's in CI, it's upstream. I've been here for four years working on this stuff and they'll get my key card when they pry it from my cold dead hands. <laughs> so. Um, but that, that's a good question, and we're working with the also messaging group to kind of get a statement of, you know, what other technologies there are and what's important. Right. Okay, other questions? Yeah, uh, actually there's is also comments about the previous two gentlemen's question. So, for, uh, so I heard it's a zero MQ and the Rabbit MQ and there are some other MQ like uh, Kafka. So uh, there are some advantage or disadvantage. My comments is why uh, OpenStack community don't do like uh, AWS do. So I worked with AWS before. So they always use their own platform MQ uh, 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 system like the uh, uh, SQS, uh, SNS. So it looks like we have Zucker, if I understand correctly. Um, so why uh, why the uh, OpenStack community does not use the OpenStack their own MQ? Yeah, yeah okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, it it's it's my my answer is not the official OpenStack <laughs> community, but it's my it's my personal opinion that the Zucker is a service for the user of messaging queue, and uh, RabbitMQ is an internal middleware to connect in one services, like a Nova, Cinder. So it's the, the purpose of the messaging is different from Zaka between the RabbitMQ. I think it's a design decision of open source community or and each open source component. Uh, is it 
okay to your questions? Any other questions or comment? If nothing, it's time to finish this presentation. Okay, thanks. Thanks for coming this presentation.